Hello and welcome to today's video. We are doing another pick a pile reading. So as you can see, I've put some talismans on three piles of these Crystal Ally Oracle cards. And the way I'd like you to intuitively guide your own reading experience today is to just have a look at these three gemstone pendants that I made this week. And instead of trying to decide which pile of cards is calling to you or which pile is going to have the right message, because I know that can lead to all kinds of anxiety and decision fatigue, just have a look at these three pendants and think of which one you'd rather wear. Choose your gemstones, choose your crystal talisman. And we're going to call this pile one pile two and pile three. So like I said, if you choose this pendant, pile one is your reading. If you choose this pendant, pile two. If you choose this one, pile three. And where I got the idea to do it this way is that when I had my first professional tarot card reading by a lovely reader named Elspeth on Granville Island in Vancouver over a decade ago, after the reading, she told me to go to a crystal shop and she didn't give me any other guidance as to what I should buy, except she told me, look at everything and buy yourself something that calls to you, pick your favorite. And what's interesting is the pendant that I chose, when the lady at the crystal shop described to me the properties of that particular gemstone, they were exactly what I wanted. Like they were exactly aligned with the goals and the intentions I had set for myself. So we're going to do it this way. So I'll get into your readings. Just go into the video description and click on the timestamp associated with the pendant you choose, pile one, pile two, or pile three. And we'll see you in your reading. And hello to you who chose pile one. The pendant that you picked, your personal power talisman for this reading, includes an enormous bead of lapis lazuli with this little Tibetan inlaid bead as an accent. The lapis lazuli represents self-knowledge. And when you're drawn to this gemstone in particular, it shows that this is a time in your life when you are going to be exploring the depths of your own identity. So thinking back to the formation of your personality, the experiences you had as a child, the things you were drawn to, what you loved to do, as well as some of the shadow elements, you know, negative experiences that happened to you that had some bearing on your life to come. When we start unraveling the different layers of ourselves and diving into the depths of our own identity, there's always more than we imagined rather than less. There's always more to you than how you would sum yourself up just in a, in a random moment. Like if somebody asks you, who are you? You typically answer by your name, your gender, your family, your background, where you live, where you're from. I'm American or I'm Canadian or, you know, I'm a landscaper, whatever it might be. But when you go onto a journey of self-knowledge, it's not so much about self-identification as it is about really deeply uncovering the qualities about you that drive you, your creative passions, your spiritual self-interests, like the meditations that you enjoy. And so by choosing this particular talisman, I can say for sure, at this moment in time, you are on a journey of self-discovery. And it doesn't matter when I filmed this video or when you're watching it. I mean, to be specific, it's December 3rd, 2021, but you could be watching this right as soon as it's uploaded or a week later or a year later or a decade later. And this is the message for you right now. 
What's really synchronous about this, after I made this little talisman, one of the other jewelry designers I follow on Instagram posted an image of a gemstone that she was working with called rhodochrosite, which is a, a pink stone of the heart chakra formed with similar striations, similar layers to the layers we see in this beautiful earthy looking lapis lazuli. And in her description of her pendant, she said that whenever we see a stone with layers, it's about the layers of self and the layers of identity. No matter what the stone is, it represents all the different depths of who you are. So congratulations to you, Pile One. That is like the little symbol of you at this moment, more than what meets the eye, filled with mysteries, filled with depth, filled with hidden layers and secrets about yourself, some which you'll know, some which might kind of reside in past life experiences. But today is all about rediscovering yourself. So the reading I'm doing today is with the Crystal Ally cards. I've given them a nice shuffle. I'll also play some singing bowl here just to cleanse the energy in the space and to cleanse the cards. As I do that, I'd like you to focus on making this a co-creative reading. Set the intention that your higher self, your spirit guides are guiding my hands in the cards that I choose and that the messages that come through will serve your highest good and represent your highest truth. Take a deep breath in, and when you're ready, exhale, and we'll start your reading. Right. So we're going to look at three cards. The central card will represent the present moment, to the left the past, and to the right the future. We have turquoise, chrysoprase, and tourmaline. So the journey of self-discovery is not an easy journey. Sometimes there are challenges that come up. And in your situation right now, I am feeling some blockages. Now, when we're doing a reading primarily focused on self-discovery and the three cards that appear are reversed, it shows that there is an aspect of yourself that has built up some resentment towards who you are. That means you may feel as if you have failed yourself, as if you are not where you imagined you would be at this point. Your manifestations have not yet become visible to you. And for that reason, you're feeling incomplete. The present moment, which again represents right now, is the Stone of Turquoise. And in this deck, the message associated with Turquoise is wholeness. And we see this beautiful inlaid mosaic, kind of a tile mandala, which represents you from the center of who you are in the center of this mandala, radiating outwards towards this lapis lazuli that we see in the outline. Lapis lazuli, again, being your totem stone right now, the stone of self-knowledge. Now, the beautiful thing about a mandala no matter which angle we look at it, whether it's right side up, sideways, or upside down, the whole remains whole, the circle remains a circle. But when the card appears reversed like this, it shows that you are feeling incomplete. There's something missing or something you perceive to be missing in your life. And for that reason, you're not feeling totally confident in your identity. Now, if we look to the past, which goes back, I would say about a month to the time I did the previous reading on this channel, over the past month, there have been inhibitions in your ability to give to the world, give to others and give to yourself. 
what you really, really feel like giving. I'm not reading this regarding material possessions specifically. It's not like you bought a present and then didn't give it to somebody. It's more like your personal gifts, your talents, your abilities. You haven't been expressing them. What I'm really feeling is that the situations in your life, the, the necessities of your life, are making it seem as if what you have to give is less important than what the world expects of you, than what you have to do. And by forcing yourself to do what you have to do, which is kind of a necessity of life in order to survive, you're feeling stifled, creatively unfulfilled, spiritually unfulfilled, mentally I, I feel drained. The energy I'm getting from this whole reading is that you are feeling drained and repressed. The Stone of Chrysoprase, it's a water element stone, and water element is the element of emotions and fluidity and nurturing and caring. We see the chrysoprase here in the form of a heart with a bow. These hands are holding it out. When that's reversed, it's as if you haven't given yourself the necessary self-care. You're not taking enough time just to do what you want to do. Again, it's like you feel overwhelmed by what you have to do, by your responsibilities. And as a result, you're not giving yourself your own attention, your own love. And that's what's creating this feeling of lack or this lack of wholeness. Now, if this trajectory continues, like if you continue on this path that's been forged, holding back your gifts, feeling incomplete, the future that's coming up is a yearning for inner peace, a yearning for an inner peace that's not actually felt. When we see the stone of tourmaline, pink tourmaline, green tourmaline, blue tourmaline, they're all kind of represented in this card. It's another water element stone, so another stone of nurturing and care and fluidity. When that's reversed, it's as if, it's as if you feel a deep, deep yearning for something intangible. It's like being homesick, but you don't really know what home even is anymore. And yeah, the water element that we see in all three of these cards is showing there's a rigidity that's built up in your life. I'm not sure what it is specifically for you. Of course, when we do a group reading like this, there will be multiple people watching and for each one, the specific situation will be different, but it could be work and striving to meet a deadline, striving to fulfill a corporate agenda, striving to do what a boss dictates. It could be school related and focusing so much on assignments and homework that you're not able to be creative and to do what you love. It could even be relating to a family where other people's needs Wow, I, I got a strong ping at the word family, where other people and their problems, maybe somebody you know is sick, and so all of your care is going towards them, diverted kind of away from, from your own requirements. It's like you're giving all of yourself to other people, bosses, teachers, family, friends, and at the end of the day, you feel like there's none of yourself left for you. And I feel that's really why you chose Lapis Lazuli as your personal talisman right now. Because this stone is a reminder that in order to have enough of your energy to give and to distribute around to everybody else, you have to put yourself first. You have to become your own priority. And you have to nurture yourself. Nurture your gifts and give yourself that care. I'm going to look at the Osho Zen Tarot to get some specifics about these cards. What I'm going to ask, can the higher guides of those who chose Pile 1 show us what needs to be shifted in order to experience wholeness, in order to 
give the gift of self and of self-care and in order to move into a future of feeling inner peace. Wow. Okay, this is really coming clear now. In order to feel that wholeness, you need a powerful awakening. You need something to kind of snap in your system to clear out all the elements that you've decided represent yourself, but that are not really you. What's really cool is that the element of the wholeness card, it's a storm element card illustrated by the lightning in the background here. And the thunderbolt card is the ultimate card of lightning. In the traditional tarot deck, this is associated with the card of the tower. And when it appears right side up, it's actually a good thing. It looks like something major and violent is happening. These people are falling from the tower, in this case, the tower being you. But what's actually happening is a cleansing and a purification. So I would suggest at this moment in time, in order for you to feel whole, it's not about adding a piece of the puzzle that's missing. It's more about clearing away the debris that's not meant to be there. I'll use your, your bedroom as an example. A person who's missing a bed and who doesn't have a light, they would feel like their room is incomplete because they have nowhere to sleep and nothing to illuminate the darkness. In your case, it's not that anything is missing it's more like there's so much clutter that you can't even get to your bed. It needs to be cleaned out in order to feel comfortable once again. Now that's just an analogy to describe your identity right now, your inner space. And so what I would suggest doing is make yourself a list of everything you do in a typical day, everything that you identify with, what you think of when you think of you. And then look through that list and decide what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. Which things that you associate with yourself feel like they're no longer meant to be a part of you. And cross those things off your list. Set the intention that you'll be letting them go. I can tell by the fact that the integration card came up in the future over the card of what to be done to experience that inner peace. By nature of the fact that this card appeared right side up, you will be successful. Your efforts will be rewarded. It's interesting, I've never worn my snake ring in a YouTube video before, but today I felt drawn to it. And I think it was just for you, specifically for you and for your reading, because the symbol of the Ouroboros, that symbol of infinity, is coming up in this card of integration and all the elements we see coming together in the yin-yang over your card of inner peace show that that's the other key. Once you've gone through and listed out the aspects of yourself that you want to keep, the aspects of yourself you're ready to purge, to cleanse, integrating everything else together. For example, in your list, if there's something that you do in the day that you don't want to do anymore, you may not have the luxury of dropping it immediately and instantaneously. For example, if you don't like going to work, but you have to pay your rent or you have to pay off a loan or you have to pay for anything really, it's not like you can just up and quit your job because it no longer feels like you're meant to be doing it. But you can start integrating that into yourself in a way that no longer feels resistant. Drawing a line or, or creating sort of a personal boundary. I, I think this is the ultimate word for your reading. Word of the day for pile one is boundary. Putting up a boundary where you no longer identify yourself by what you do or feel limited by life's necessities. That will help you understand that you are more than the sum of your actions. You are worth so much more than your name, your appearance, your job description, your past, your family, your friends. 
the you that you're discovering in this quest for self-knowledge is not the superficial you that the world sees when they see you. It's the depth of you. It's the true spiritual identity of you. Letting go of this association with your physicality and with your actions and with your obligations, that's going to give you this integrity. The reason I'm going into so much detail about that, I don't want to give the impression that you need to burn your house down, like in the Tower card or the Thunderbolt card. It's not saying that you need to get rid of everything in your life. It's more to get rid of the idea that you are defined by all of these things in your life. This moment is just one of many, many, many moments that creates the entirety of your infinite existence. It doesn't define you any more than one grain of sand defines the beach or one star defines the universe. This moment is passing and when you look at yourself from that higher perspective, you'll understand that all the things that feel like they are infringing on your inner space that are taking up and taking away from who you're meant to be, they will lose their significance. They will lose that all-encompassing dread that you've built up around them. And you'll be able to see that there is a better future coming for you, that you are moving yourself in the right direction, even if right now it feels like you're just dodging obstacles and running through, running through a course. Looking to see how this is rooted in the past, I feel like you've built up a lot of guilt over things that you think you should have done but didn't do. This card of Chrysoprase reversed, where it shows you haven't put time into the self-care, you haven't really given yourself what you deserve. When the card of guilt comes up over that, it shows that you spend a lot of time regretting missed opportunities or past mistakes. It's like I remember somebody once commenting on a post on, I think it was on Instagram, somebody commented, if I had started dieting and exercising five years ago, I wouldn't be obese today. It was a post on Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. It was a post about plant-based diet and health. And somebody just filled with regret, filled with guilt was saying, if I had made a switch five years ago, I'd be healthy and happy today. Now, I'm not feeling that it's about diet and exercise specifically, but it could be if I had invested money instead of spending money, I'd be rich today instead of poor. You know, if I had gone to school instead of taking a year off, I would be more educated. It's all these ifs, if, 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 if I had done things differently then, I'd be happier now. But what the Thunderbolt card is showing you is, if you do those things now, that's where you'll be in the future. It's not about resenting your past self for not giving the gift to your present self. It's about being present and giving that gift to your future self. All of them are the same self. That reminds me of another post I saw online. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago but the next best time to plant a tree is right now. So all the things that you felt guilty for not doing, all the gifts that you wish you had given yourself, all the efforts that you wish you had made, it's time to just drop all of that guilt, put it aside, it's the past. The past has no more bearing on your life. And it's time to decide what do you want to do now? Who do you want to be? How do you want to feel? What do you want to have? How do you want to express yourself? How do you want to identify yourself? How do you want your life to go from this moment on? Burn through all that guilt. Burn through all of these layers of resentment. Burn through all of these layers of if only and move into the future where five years from now, you'll look back on whatever time it is now, either December 2021 or whenever you're seeing this video, 
and think, wow, thank you, self. You really did the best thing you could do for me. That's your key to the inner peace. No longer thinking of what your life would be if you had done things differently then, but deciding what your life will be by doing those things now. The future is looking positive. The future is looking really bright. And so I think what you should take away from this reading, if there's just one message to take away, it's that there's no reason to carry any guilt for things from the past. Because whatever you did back then, you thought that that was the best you could do, or you thought that was all you could do. It's not like you deliberately decided, you know, screw my future self. I don't really care what happens. I'm just going to make all these mistakes because I want to. It's more that you were living the best life you knew how to live at that moment in time. And now you have a higher perspective. Now you know better. Instead of thinking, wow, I was sure irresponsible back then or limited back then. Instead think, wow, I have grown so much since then and now I know if I had done things differently back then, I'd be in a better place right now. So I'm going to start doing those things in order to be in a better place in times to come. Okay, as I'm shuffling these cards, two have jumped out. And so I'm going to take those as the two messages for you from the Crystallery. Wow. So the card that was reversed in the position of present, you live in abundance, imperial topaz, that card was reversed. The card that was right side up in the place of the future, full of riches, citrine. How fascinating that both of these have to do with material wealth, living in abundance, full of riches. Right now, you may not feel like this cornucopia or this horn of plenty is overflowing in your life, but you are moving in the direction of having everything you need in order to feel fulfilled and taken care of and happy. It may seem like I'm pushing an agenda of things are going to get better, you're going to do better, you will be successful, you can do it. I don't mean to sound like a cliched life cheerleader, but this is what the cards are showing. It's coming out. It's not me. It's your guidance telling you things may not be fruitful and overflowing at the moment, but you have all the power within your capacity to shift that and to become abundant. So definitely your future is looking better than your past and better than your present. And I, I also want to mention, you might feel a little bit shaken that the cards this time were coming up showing obstacles. That doesn't mean that everything is going wrong in life. These are the cards coming up showing you that you are ready to tackle this stuff now, that you have strengthened yourself. When things come up reversed in a reading, it's not to say that you've done anything bad or that you are failing. It's showing you that now you are solid enough that you are ready to face this. You're ready to deal with this. You're ready to handle the challenge. And for sure, you're ready to reinvent yourself financially and with regards to your physicality, to take your health into your hands, to take your sense of identity back into your hands and to create that abundance. So if you're thinking the last time you watched one of my readings, all the cards were right side up showing all these positive energies and this time they were reversed, it's not at all like you've regressed or like you've gone backwards. It's just showing you all of those positives are still true, but now here are the shadow aspects that need to be dealt with. And shadow work is not about negativity. It's about facing that which you didn't want to look at before. And all I can say is you are already shifting your focus. You're already shifting that balance so that you'll be able to feel that wholeness and experience that inner peace.
have a look at these beautiful cards for a moment because that is the future you are moving towards. That's the gift you're giving yourself. That's where you're taking yourself to inner peace, to integration, and to a life full of riches. So pat yourself on the back and get ready to do some of this inner work. Write your list. How do you identify yourself? Which items on that list do you want to keep? Which do you want to shift? Start making those shifts. Start doing the things you wish you had done five years ago. And you can only be successful. The cards are not going to bullshit you. They're not going to give you false promises. They're only going to reveal what you have already set yourself into the process of accomplishing. You're headed in this direction. Keep going. It might feel like it's a struggle, but it will be worth it in the end. And you will experience the rich life that you're hoping for. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this reading was helpful for you today. So much love to you. And we'll see you in the new year. The next video I do will be a video reading for 2022. So I hope I see you again in that one. So much love and bye for now. Hello and welcome to your reading. You have chosen Pile 2. And this is a small but mighty little talisman that I made here using gemstones connected to the heart, the throat, and the third eye chakras. So on the very top, we have this lovely piece of indicolite blue fluorite. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it's such a beautiful stone with kind of layers of different shades of blue. It reminds me of if you took some navy blue ink and dropped it into a cerulean blue well, there's just clouds of different color. Those colors are linked to the throat and the third eye, which represent your personal truth, your expression of self, as well as your intuition, your ability to see through the veil of physicality into what lies beyond. And so if you're drawn to this little talisman, it shows that now is a time in your life when you are really awakening your personal psychic gifts, your higher perceptions, your intuition, and by also connecting with the throat, represented by this blue appetite and the blue fluorite, you're not only tuning into your personal truth, you're also deepening your ability to express what comes through to you. The peridot connecting to the heart show that this is all coming from a place of love. The Herkimer quartz diamond is amplifying that intention. And of course, the power piece in this entire pendant, the Moldavite at the center here, is showing that you are connecting for a higher purpose. The reason that you're on this path of psychic awakening and of higher perception and discovering your abilities, it's all surrendered to the highest good. So you're really in a place right now of deepening your personal spiritual connection and also empowering yourself to be able to talk about it more, to be more open about things that maybe seem a little bit elusive to some people. Some people might not always be ready to understand them. It seems you are empowering yourself to be able to strike up those conversations and get that ball rolling. So I've shuffled the cards really well. I've mixed them up so that the energies from the reading in Pile 1 will not come through into your reading here in Pile 2. Now I'll play some singing bowl. As I do that, I'd like you to take a deep breath, connect with your higher self, with your guides, set the strong intention that whatever messages come through, come through to serve your highest good from the space of your highest truth. This reading is a co-creative process. I'm just here as a translator to take your messages and reveal them to you. Exhale when you feel ready and we'll start your reading. That bowl was extremely high pitched this time. There's a high frequency that you're residing in. 
pile too. I'm excited to see which energies are coming through in your life right now. We'll start with the present, past, and future. So pile two, the good news here, all three of your cards are right side up, which shows that you're in a place of personal power right now. You are receiving the gifts existence is giving you. You're not feeling inhibited, more like you're feeling empowered and excited. And that's coming through in the present moment with the card of giving right side up. Christ of Praise, the stone represented by the heart in the center of this card, is a stone of the heart center and it's a water element gem which represents nurturing and fluidity and that energy of joy that comes in life when you're living exactly in alignment with where you're meant to be. It's like going with the flow, not fighting the current, letting the river carry you forward. You're on your path. You're giving yourself the gifts that you're, you're needing right now. You're taking time for yourself. You're embodying self-care. And the more you give to yourself, the more fulfilled you'll be and the more able you'll be to also give to others. When we look to the past, which goes back about one month, we see a fire element card of passion represented by this magical stone called Fire Agate. And when a fire element card comes up like this, it shows that you have been driven by your creativity. Fire element is the card of creativity, of passion, of art, of sciences, of making something. And so whatever you've been focusing on, keep at it because it's been working. You've kind of reached a place where you've moved from the fire into the water which shows that you found your groove. It's no longer something all consuming that takes up all of your inner space where you're almost obsessed with your creative journey. It's more like you've embodied that creativity and now you're ready to give it to the world. For example, beginning a new body of work, making some paintings, making some drawings, doing some illustrations, writing a story, you throw yourself into that passion and when it's ready that's the gift that you have to give you have done the work you have created your body of work you've made up your portfolio you've written your story painted your picture drawn your drawings sculpted your sculptures beaded your jewelry whatever it might be you've made something and it doesn't have to be just something physical and tangible like that it could also be you have made yourself into something. You have, you have manifested your passion. I'm, I'm feeling that for you, Pile 2. You have really done the work. You have been excited about the work as you were doing it, which means that what you have to give is so much more special. And now it's time to share it and to, to really enjoy your success to really enjoy the reactions people have when you share with them what you've been working on and to also appreciate it for yourself. Again, it's, it's a card of self-care. You're giving to yourself what you deserve, which is beautiful. And moving into the future, the card of receptive power represented by the stone cuprite, it's an earth element stone, which really represents home, comfort, security, having all the material needs taken care of. Sometimes when we're focusing on an artistic or a creative passion, we're so focused on the project that whether or not it's profitable comes in second. For example, these tarot card readings. I love giving readings, so I will do these videos and give these readings whether or not I ever make money from them. If money comes, great, I'll enjoy it, but I'm doing this as a passion. That's a gift I'm giving myself. And usually when we do something from passion, we offer it as a gift, the rewards do find a way to us. Similarly, in your life pile too, you have lived your passion. You're giving that as a gift to yourself and others. And I feel that blessings of abundance are coming to you because of it. Thank you.
we're going to look at some cards from the Osho Zen Tarot, just to illustrate a little bit more specifically the gifts, the passion, and the abundance coming. Okay, two cards want to come through for that. Very interesting. So it's not that these things come easily to you. You have found a way to break through the controls that were put on your life in order to give yourself those gifts. It doesn't get much more opposite than the fluidity of the water element and the hard edges of the card of control. There have been situations in your life and people around you trying to put you into a mold, trying to convince you that things have to be done a specific way that would go against your nature. And you have found a way to coexist with that controlling influence in a way that you do what you want to do, you give what you want to give, regardless of that sort of a hierophant or that sort of a bossy mentality that they take. When this card comes through right side up rather than reversed, it shows that there's not a conflict so much as a challenge, and you are up for that challenge. Looking to the past, the cards of maturity and new vision reversed show that when you were living this passion, when you were creating your creation, It was something really groundbreaking. What you've been working on, what you've been doing, it's not something that was taught to you or given to you easily. Again, what I'm feeling from the second layer of cards in your reading is that you have made your life what it is, not because you've been given everything you need. It's not like you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth and people have handed you on a platter everything that you've ever wanted. It's more like you've had some challenges, but you have discovered your strength in facing those challenges. The maturity card represents somebody who has come fully into her power. She's flowering. She has all of her chakras are in alignment. That wheel is in motion. The new vision card shows all these sacred geometric building blocks and the individual and warrior pose creating reality out of these building blocks. When both of these are reversed, I should explain the first three cards are energy. These three cards are more like the physical reality. Physically, you've had setbacks, you've had challenges, you've had naysayers, you've had people trying to control you, trying to define you, but you have found your inner energetic strength to overcome their control. It's like you've achieved your passion regardless of people telling you what you're doing is immature or you should do it a different way. You should follow the standard protocol. Don't try to innovate here, replicate. You've decided to forget all of that, to forget what people are telling you is conventionally approved what is defined and socially organized, and you're doing things your way and it's working for you. Now the future card of ripeness reversed over the card of receptive power. It does show that you will have to put a little bit more effort in to make your creations lucrative. Remember how I was just saying, you do your passion, you give it to the world, regardless of whether or not that's going to translate into abundance, regardless of whether you'll get paid for it, to put it really crassly and materialistically, it's like you're giving the gifts that you have to give, not expecting anything else in return. What this card is showing is that if you're manifesting the life of a starving artist, you will live the life of a starving artist. It's showing you do need to push one last barrier aside. You kind of have to jump one more hurdle, overcome one last obstacle, and that's the obstacle of marketing yourself, 
of speaking to your talents, what I'm really feeling, Pile 2, is that you know that what you do is awesome. You're passionate about it. You know that what you do is unlike things other people do. You know you're really good. You're ready to give what you have freely. You're ready to share what you have with whoever will take it. You're ready to back down if you're offering that gift to somebody who says, that's worthless, I don't want it. And you'll receive what they offer, which ripeness card reverse shows they're not really willing to offer much. In other words, you found your niche, you're excited about your work, but you're selling yourself short because you don't feel entitled to abundance as a result of your work. There was a gallery owner who gave me advice once, years and years and years ago, right before I went to art school. One of my paintings was on display and one of the gallery clients made an offer for it. And I immediately said, I don't even care what he's offering. If he loves the painting, I'll sell it for whatever price he names as long as I recover my material costs. And she asked me, well, what were your material costs? And I said, well, the canvas was about $15. I used about half a tube of three different colors of paint. So that's about 20 bucks. So if, if I get, you know, $35, I'm happy. And boy, she got ferocious with me. She actually yelled and I had never heard this lady yell before. And she said, your work is worth more than the sum of its parts. How many hours did you spend painting? How many years did you develop your style? How much love did you pour into this piece? It's not worth the price of the canvas and the paints. It's worth your life. And I took that to this day, I don't really sell my original artwork because it feels priceless after hearing how she described it. What I'm feeling is that you have the heart of an artist. You have the passion for your work. You have that feeling of, well, if somebody loves what I do, I'll just give it to them because that's what I made it for. I made it for people to enjoy. And you're open to your receptivity, which shows it's not that you're going to push away wealth or push away gifts or push away payment. You're ready to receive it, but you'll receive what people give. You're not going to ask for more. And what I'm feeling these cards from the tarot deck are saying is people will try to rip you off. People will set limits and put limits on you and offer you what they think is a hard bargain. And because you're willing to give, you'll always come up a little bit short in that bargain. You'll feel fulfilled by the work that you're doing, but that's not necessarily going to pay all the bills. And so it's time for you to decide the value of what you do. You have the right to put a higher price on your work, whether that means demanding the people around you be more appreciative of you, whether that means people you sell things to pay more for them, whether that means people speak to you in a more encouraging tone. It doesn't just have to be about money. It's not just people have to pay you more for what you do. It's also people have to pay you more respect for what you are. I feel like you have such a gentle, giving, creative, passionate energy that you're so generous that you don't even feel slighted if people take advantage of you. You're, you're just happy to help. And while that's a good thing energetically, it can be a difficult thing physically in this world. There might be other planets out there and other star systems and higher frequencies where you would be living like a king or a queen because your inner goodness would translate into karma, like a karmic payment, and you'd get all the best of the best things. Things on planet Earth down here are organized a little differently. 
the people who try to tell you there's an established way, there's a way to do business, there's a there's a system you have to integrate into, in a way they're not wrong. Things have been developed on this planet in a way that's dog eat dog. It's very cutthroat. Whoever asserts themselves the most dominantly will have dominance. It's not a system of merit where the better you are, the better you have. It's more a system of force where the more forceful you are, the more others will have to fall in line with you. What I'm feeling is that it kind of goes against your nature to stand up for yourself, to kind of dominate in an encounter but it's time for you to step more into your power in that sense. It's time for you to kind of do some research. I don't know what you do specifically, Pile 2. It doesn't have to be visual arts, which I've used as an illustrative example here. It doesn't have to be about painting or drawing or sculpting or making things. Whatever your passion is, Decide what it's worth. Decide if, for example, if you didn't have the particular skill set and the particular creative drive that you have, how much would you be willing to pay for it if somebody else had it to offer? That's what it's worth. That's what it's worth. This is kind of the code I live by when it comes to setting a price for my readings and my jewelry or the journals that I make, whatever I sell online. I ask myself, what would I pay for this if I didn't have the background in making jewelry? If I didn't have the intuitive ability or the understanding of the cards, how much would I pay for this reading? How much would I pay for this? How much would I pay for that? That way I know I'm not undervaluing myself because I know I wouldn't try to cheat myself or rip myself off. Similarly, instead of asking from others what they're willing to give, consider what you would give. You, the generous, giving, loving, compassionate individual that you are, how much would you give to another version of you offering something that you are not able to do? And you'll understand what you're worth. And that's how you'll get that ripeness. That's how you'll have the receptive power awakened. I'm going to ask for two more cards here from the Osho Zen Tarot. One card, how can Pile 2 make the most of the control that's being imposed externally? And how can Pile 2 receive the rewards Pile 2 deserves? Okay. Wow. I always love it when it's obvious. We have the ripeness of fruit, and then we have this gorgeous illuminated figure here, the spirit of sharing, and she's offering that abundance. She's offering the grapes and the pomegranate and the light of illumination. These blooming sunflowers are behind her. That's good. That's the future to move to. In the present moment, what has to be done in order to overcome that externally imposed control is, first of all, don't be lazy. Don't just do what's easy to do. Do what has to be done. This character sitting here drinking his cocktail, he looks pretty comfortable, right? What he's looking towards is a blue sky, a clean floor, everything seems to be in order, so he's just laid back. But the foundations he's leaning against are cracked and crumbling. Laziness represents doing what's easy and ignoring the hard work that has to be completed. When we see that and we see the card of guilt, this individual who's just, her brain is being clawed at, by all of these thoughts of what should have been done, what could have been done, what had to be done but wasn't done. And the guilt and the laziness are coming in the way of what I feel would be your financial success here. It's easier to just do what other people tell you to do. It's way easier to get along in life just 
complying with the pre-established system, it's much harder to figure out what's wrong with it and start fixing it. But it's important for you to do. Let go of any guilt. Let go of any feelings that you should have done things differently or could have done things differently. There's a lot of re repetition. I think this is something a lot of us are dealing with right now because the same card of Christ of Praise with giving with the same card of guilt came up in Pile 1's reading. For them, it was the past. For you, it's the present. Um, but this dynamic is playing out, it seems, collectively for us at this moment. And so let go of the guilt that you should have done more, could have done more, didn't do more. For example, I sold that painting years and years ago for much less than it was worth, despite that gallery owner's better advice. And then I felt guilty about it for the longest time. Oh, I should have, I should have listened to her. Why did I undersell it? If only, you know, I had valued my work more. But that's such a limiting cycle to be caught in, that cycle of should have done things differently. In your case, the fact that it's in the present shows that the power is yours now to shift it. And by nature of the fact that the sharing card is coming up right side up in the future, I can already see that the, the wheels are turning right now. You're making these connections and you will do what's right for yourself going forward. This sharing figure, she represents you. This is you having established yourself, having fulfilled your ambitions, having built up what you want to create and then you'll be giving from the place of abundance from the place of having so much that there's plenty to share instead of giving the coat off your back you'll be giving one of the many many coats hanging in your closet because you have enough for yourself and to just freely give to others the sharing character she's one of the most beautiful cards in this entire tarot deck She's the empress. She's the one who takes care of everyone else. She's the ultimate of that maturity. So you are heading in the right direction. Energetically, you've already established yourself really powerfully. Now it's just a matter of deciding that you are worth convincing the other people around you to honor, to respect, and to pay fairly. I'm going to ask for a card from the Chris Illustrated Crystallery. What should be Pile 2's meditative focus in this situation? How can Pile 2 move from feeling guilty for asking for what they deserve into feeling fulfilled and worthy of receiving what they deserve? Choose your initiation. The card of Emerald. The wise cat totem here with this flame. Look at this. This lantern, instead of having a flame of fire, it has a flame of emerald. That is such a powerful symbol because emerald is a heart stone. It's a stone of the Anahata Chakra. When this comes up saying, choose your initiation, it means there are no wrong choices for you to overcome this hesitancy to demand your value. It shows that however you choose to do it, that's the right way to do it. Which again confirms that energetically speaking, all your energy cards being right side up shows that you've done the inner work. How you're going to translate that into the outer world reality. It's a free for all. It's totally up to you. It's basically saying you can do no wrong at this moment. As soon as you realize you've been undervaluing yourself in society, with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers, with your classmates, with whoever it may be in your physical surroundings, as soon as you see that you have been holding yourself back from really naming your price, what, I, what I'm getting as an example here, it's like if somebody comes up to you and says, wow, I really love that thing of yours. How much do you want for it? Your typical go-to response would be, well, whatever you want to give. 
You know, if somebody says, you know, I love your diamond ring, I'll trade you for this pebble, you'll be like, okay, you know, if that's what you want to give for it, I'll, I'll go buy that. I, I don't, I don't want to cause any troubles. I don't want to make any waves. That might be an extreme example, but what I feel like is if you look in, I'm not saying you've given away diamonds for stones, but there are parallels in your life. There are times people have said to you, I'm going through a difficult time right now. I want to vent all of my pain, listen to all of this. Instead of saying, okay, I'll listen to all of your troubles, but you must be there for me too. You'll just take all their troubles. You'll just do all the listening. If friends want to choose the restaurant, choose the movie to see, choose the event to go to, instead of standing up for yourself and saying, I have worth too. Okay, you pick the movie, but I'll pick the restaurant. It's like you're always ready to take the shorter end of the stick. You're always ready to compromise. And that's what I mean by undervaluing yourself. Now that you see that, now that it's coming clear, however you decide to approach the situation, it might be different for your friends, different for your family, different for your coworkers. All these little eyes represent all the eyes on you, all the people in your life. Once you understand that by saying to your friend, actually, no, this diamond is worth more than that rock, make me a better offer, or I'm going to keep my diamond because I like it. Your friend's not going to say, how dare you? That's so rude. It's more likely that they'll say, oh, you know what? You're right. I I'm sorry. I, I should have thought this through a little bit more before offering you something lesser and they'll either offer you something more or respect the boundary that you've put up where you've decided to keep your thing. I feel like the people around you have been just waiting for you to step more into your power. If somebody has been, for example, if your boss hasn't given you a raise and you deserve one, you've been working your ass off, you've been waiting for them to recognize it they might also be waiting for you to say, hey, have you noticed that I've done this, 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 and this, but I've only been paid for that and that? I think I'm worth more. They're not going to say, what? You dare to say that to me? You're fired, or I'm going to give you a demotion. The worst case scenario is they'll say they haven't noticed, but now they'll start paying attention. Best case scenario is they'll say, you know what? You're right, you are worth more. Let's get it. I feel like, pile two, as you're coming into your power, getting back to the talisman you chose with this stone of intuition, the stone of rapid spiritual transformation, the crystal of high frequency energy, the heart chakra gem, and the third eye and communication gem. As you're embodying these qualities more and more, the people around you are only going to deepen their appreciation for you. Choose your initiation means however you decide to go about getting it, you will get it. You will become this sharing figure. You will become the queen or the king of your queendom or kingdom. You're going to have plenty. And by putting a higher value on yourself, that doesn't mean you're going to be less generous or less giving. It means you'll have more to give. You'll have more to be generous with. Enjoy that. You've earned it. You are earning it. And people around you will respect you for declaring a higher value, for putting a higher value on yourself and your work. Don't be scared. Like the, the number one message I feel your higher guidance wants you to receive is that you're not going to lose anything by putting a higher value on yourself. You're only going to gain. It's only going to be a positive thing. People already know that you have a high worth. They're not going to resent you for realizing it about yourself. Thank you so much for watching this reading today. I hope it was helpful for you. You can check out the links in the video description below if you want to actually pick up a talisman for yourself with these crystal energies, or if you'd like to book a private reading with me, I'll put the link to that also in the description. Regardless, 
I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. And yeah, I look forward to hearing about it as you achieve that higher level of success. So much love to you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. And last but not least, pile three, welcome to your reading. The talisman you chose is a powerful one. I call this enormous wand pendant the master key because I've put into it crystals that represent the highest forms of self-discovery, of universal knowledge, of psychic awakening, of clairvoyance, of extraterrestrial consciousness, of all those higher energies. And they're not small stones. As you can see, I picked some big ones. Starting at the top, the Herkimer Quartz Diamond is actually a twinned crystal. Do you see how there are two crystals joined together as one? Whenever we see a twin crystal like this, I'll try it. There we go. On the blue background, you can see it more clearly. Whenever we see two crystals joined together, they represent the awakening of your inner masculine and feminine, your active and your receptive self. You'll hear a lot of intuitive readers, a lot of spiritualists, especially the New Agers, a lot of them will talk about twin flames, but my understanding through years of meditating on the subject and thinking of it is that none of us are split into two with another separate individual out there who we need to complete us. We ourselves have everything we're looking for in order to be complete. And working with a twin crystal helps us integrate those aspects of ourselves in order for us to feel fulfilled. And that doesn't mean that we don't have people in our lives who we feel great with, who help us feel fulfilled, but it means their job is not to fulfill us. Our job is to fulfill ourselves and then we will attract others who are also fulfilled as opposed to other needy people looking for somebody else to complete them. The twin crystal, when you're drawn to that, it means this is a time in your life when you are coming into your power so strongly, you are coming into your sense of fulfillment. Moldavite as the starborn stone of transformation shows that this coming to personal power is also coming with regards to highest consciousness, to galactic consciousness, to the realization of the family beyond the physical earth plane, the family that is like a cosmic family. The lapis lazuli as the stone of self-knowledge, doesn't it just look like a little earth with these oceans and these waves? That's the stone of self-knowledge. Black tektite, it's a stone of intense protection and power. It's cosmic, just like Moldavite, but with more of a grounding energy. And Amethyst is the stone of higher connection, the stone of the crown chakra, connecting to your highest... I almost said your highest self, but I feel, Pile 3, you are your highest self. It's about recognizing that, connecting with your guidance, with your, ange your angels, your angelic identity all of those good things. I'll play some singing bowl here. As I do this, I'd like you to set the intention that whatever messages come through when these cards come through from your higher guidance to serve your highest good. They're not my messages to you. I'm just a translator here describing what your guidance is revealing. Take a deep breath in. When you feel ready, slowly exhale, and we'll start your reading. That was the loudest and highest pitched of all the three readings today. It's always interesting how the energies shift like that. 
So shuffling the cards, it's a co-creative process. It doesn't matter when I did this reading or when you're watching it. These are the messages for you right now. Pile three. We have present, past, and future. Okay, a bunch of cards came up for your future. That's never happened before. They got caught under my ring, but I'll see that as a necessity. Beautiful stones, beautiful messages. You may have felt like you wanted to pick pile one and you wanted to pick pile two, but you also picked pile three. Maybe you liked all of the talismans I showed at the beginning because I'm seeing some repetitive cards that were there in the other readings. I always see that as a oneness, like those of us who are drawn to videos like this, those of us who are participating in this reading, we're going through some similar things. So when you choose the master key, when you choose to be your own fulfillment, that is not the easy path. That is the hard path. And what I'm seeing here is that you have plenty of struggles that you're facing and that you have faced. They are leading you to the ideal outcome. You're, you're getting there. You're getting what's needed. I want to point out you have an earth element card here, two fire element cards, a water element card, and a storm element card. So of the five elements, you have earth, water, fire, and the ether, the storm. Because there's only one element missing, the air element card, I'm going to focus on that as kind of the, the element that you need the most at this point in time. So if somebody is missing fire, they need to be around fire, have a candle, have some warmth, sit by a fireplace. If somebody is missing earth, they need to wiggle their toes in the sand, go for a hike, hug a tree. If somebody's missing water, they have to drink more water, immerse themselves, sit by the beach. If somebody is missing storm, watching the lightning, you know, even just rubbing their feet on the carpet and then touching something metal to get that little spark. In your case, because the missing element is the air element card, do as much breathwork meditation as possible. Breathe more deeply. Be conscious of your breaths. When we breathe only unconsciously, for example, you gasp if you're shocked, you breathe shallowly if you're going for a jog, you breathe more deeply if you're meditating. When the breath that you take in isn't under your conscious control. You can get pulled this way and that way by life. Part of the yogic secret about pranayama, about breathwork meditation, is that the way we breathe can actually shift the way we feel. When I played the singing bowl at the beginning of this reading and said, okay, take a deep breath in, set this intention that these messages are here for your highest good, slowly breathe out, did you feel like that was the first time you've thought about how you're breathing in a while? When you took that deep breath, when you breathed out again slowly? Had you maybe already exhaled when I said breathe out slowly and thought, oh wait, shit, was I supposed to hold that breath? There's something in your breathing, there's something in your breath that is the key to your highest awakening. It's going to unlock something for you. Before I even interpret these cards, I want to share with you one of the most profound experiences of my life was a vision I had of Mahakali when I was a young teenager. And at that time, I didn't even know who she was or what she was. I knew nothing about Hinduism, but I was suffering with an extreme fear of the dark. And I'm sorry if you've heard this story before, if you're one of my longtime subscribers, just bear with me. There's a reason I feel it's important for you to hear right now at this point in your life. So I was suffering with a fear of the dark. Every night when I went to bed, 
my bedroom was downstairs and I, I was downstairs alone in the house and I would never go downstairs into the dark basement. What I would do is I would walk from the living room where I had been sitting into the hallway. I would turn on the hallway light, turn back, turn off the, the living room light, then forward, turn on the kitchen light, then back, turn off the hallway light, then turn on the light at the stairs, then go back, turn off the light at the kitchen, down the stairs, turn off the stairs light. I made sure that I didn't have to take even a single step in the darkness. Not only that, but I was so terrified of even the possibility of the darkness that I couldn't be alone, so I would carry my sweet cat Sneaky with me and do all of this while carrying him, so that when it was finally time to turn off that very last light, the lamp next to my bed, I had my kitty in my arms for security. This was just a ritual I did. I, I couldn't not do it. I had to make sure the lights were always on. And one night, after completing that little ritual, I was laying in bed with my kitty, and I suddenly had this self-awareness come over me that going to bed was taking at least 20 minutes longer than it needed to. And what would I do one day, some hypothetical time in the future, what would I do if the lights went out? What if there was a power outage? What would I do in a few decades when I no longer had my beloved kitty with me? And I got so overwhelmed by this feeling of impending doom that, oh my God, if there's a power outage and the lights all go out, I'll be trapped. I'll be stuck in the dark. I'll have no choice. What if what if Sneaky's in another room and the lights go out and I'm stuck in the dark? And I decided that moment, I could not let my fear of the dark control my life any longer. So I carried Sneaky back upstairs, put him in my mom's room, closed the door so he wouldn't be able to follow me back, walked back to my bedroom with the lights as they'd always been. But when I reached my bed and turned off that last lamp, I took my pillowcase and tied it around my eyes like a blindfold and I sat up on my bed and decided to experience complete darkness. So my room was totally dark, the blinds were all closed. Not only that, I had a pillowcase tied like a blindfold so that even if any street light permeated the blinds, I was still in the darkness. I put my hands in Chin Mudra because I had seen that in a Buddha poster. And I started breathing in a controlled way. I took a deep breath in, held it for as long as I could possibly hold it. And then when it felt like I had to just, instead of just blowing it all out, I controlled it and forced myself to exhale slowly. And then I held my lungs empty until I absolutely couldn't stand it anymore. And then breathed in again slowly, held for as long as possible exhaled slowly, held empty for as long as possible. And I just kept repeating that breath work. And I don't know how much time went by, but suddenly in that darkness of my blindfolded inner space, I saw the most beautiful eyes I'd ever seen before. And I felt like she was gazing into me from inside of me, these eyes I was seeing. And it wasn't scary. It's just these eyes appeared in the darkness. They were beautifully made up with like a winged black eyeliner. There was a bindi, a red dot between the eyebrows. And after a moment of just admiring these eyes, I heard a snap. And it's like the snap came from my own spine. And there was an illumination on her face, this dark figure was no longer just eyes. I could see a whole beautiful face and she was surrounded by glowing skulls. And it wasn't scary, even though I didn't know anything about Hinduism or who Mahakali was. I wasn't scared of this face surrounded by skulls. I just felt my skull, like I'm seeing all of this from within my own head. So my skull must be one more of these skulls around her. Is she me? Is she inside of me or did I somehow move out of my head into the infinite darkness of reality and now I'm just floating around her like these others? It was so 
indescribably amazing. And from that night on till now, I have absolutely no fear of the dark. My fear of the dark is gone. I love the darkness. Now at night when I go to bed, I turn off all the lights and walk to the bedroom and I enjoy it. Whether my cats are with me or not, I don't feel scared. And I think it's because I confronted the darkness and instead of seeing an enemy or a monster or a ghost or a demon, I saw the compassionate mother goddess, the one to whom the skull is surrendered as ego, who removes that ego and leaves us energized. The reason I felt like this has to be shared with you right now, for one thing, the air element is missing. So breathwork meditation is an essential for you. When you start doing breath work, breathing in deeply, you almost feel like, wow, I was starving for oxygen. I didn't even realize I was short of breath. I didn't know how much I needed this until I had it. It would be like if you're really thirsty, you know you need water. If you're really tired, you know you need sleep. But when you need breath, you don't even realize it because it becomes so unconscious. Start doing this breath work and you'll find aspects of your life suddenly start falling into place that you didn't even realize were out of alignment until you made that shift. The present moment card, now we'll get to your cards. I hope you took something positive out of that and it wasn't just a big imposition on the time of your reading. Your present moment card is the card of purification in the reverse aspect. Now, when that card is reversed, it shows that there are aspects in your life holding you back. The example I gave from my life was my fear of the dark that was holding, my, holding me back. When the card comes up reversed, it shows there are aspects in your life holding you back, but they are unconscious. There are qualities you haven't identified or faced yet. And when this card comes up following the card of balance reversed in the past, where we see the light on one side, the dark on the other. When that's reversed, it's showing kind of a blind spot within yourself as to what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. What's superficial, what's deep, what's conscious, what's unconscious. I feel like you've been going through your life on autopilot for so long that you're going through the motions of living but you're not actually living your best life. You were drawn to this talisman, this master key, which unlocks all of the higher consciousness because you're ready to move out of autopilot and start driving yourself. You're ready to come into balance. You're ready to purify what needs to be purified. I would recommend putting some conscious awareness into yourself. Like the next time you jump up to go do something, whether it's jumping up to go to the bathroom or to make yourself a snack or to lock your door when you're leaving, put awareness into it. Like pretend that you're a narrator of your own life and actually say, now I'm getting up, now I'm walking to this room, now I'm locking the door. You will never again get halfway to your destination and suddenly stop and think, oh no, did I lock my door? When you put this awareness into everything you do, you know everything you've done. You come out of that autopilot and you become conscious. When people say, wow, somebody is really grounded, somebody is really conscious, somebody is really self-aware, that's what they're referring to. It's not like a big mystical secret sort of a thing. It's very simple. Be conscious of everything you're doing. Be conscious of your breathing. And of course, it's not possible to do this 24 seven. You'll fall back into your habits. But when you are aware of falling back into those habits, remind yourself to come back into presence, back into awareness, back into the present moment. And the more often you do this, the more your life is going to be your creation rather than your circumstance. Instead of being subjected to whatever the reality around you is dictating, 
you're going to be creating the reality around you as per your desires and your needs and your ambitions. You will be discovering things. It's also one of the keys to lucid dreaming. You've probably had these in the past where you suddenly realize you're having a dream while you're asleep dreaming. And sometimes we'll think, okay, I want only these dreams from now on. Every dream should be a lucid dream, but you can't create it at will. Like it happens randomly, but it doesn't happen all the time and you're not able to control it. The more consciousness you bring into your life through conscious breath work, through awareness of your actions, through coming physically into yourself as often as possible, the more you'll understand not only you can have lucid dreaming, you can also have lucid living. Be aware of the fact that you are alive right now in this life and in this body, in the infinity of existence, in the cycles of billions of years that have been repeating since the unfathomable inception of reality, moving towards the unfathomable cyclical repetition of reality, you are here right now in this moment. It's rare to be aware of that. Most people live their lives on autopilot and never take the time to stop and say, wow, in all of the billions of years and billions of worlds and billions of star systems and galaxies and universes, this is where I am. When you're aware of all the infinite possibilities for where and when you could have been and understand that there's something very unique to where you actually are, everything around you suddenly becomes available to you. All the resources of this world, all the intellectual resources available on the internet that weren't available to people even two generations ago, all the transportation available that wasn't available to people a hundred years ago, we can be world travelers in our generation in a fraction of the time and the expense it would have taken people to travel the world even just a hundred years ago. You're gifted with a life here and now. And when we purify whatever needs to be cleansed from our consciousness, and we bring ourselves into balance and into that awareness, we become the creators of our reality. See this creativity card. That cosmic hand is offering you the galaxy. This isn't a place where you're stuck. This is a place where you're, you've chosen to be. And by understanding who you are and coming into this conscious awareness of your every moment, You'll also unlock the mystery of why you chose to be here now. A lot of spiritual teachers will tell you, you've chosen this birth for a reason. You chose your parents. You chose your struggles. You chose your economic background. And a lot of us will ask, why would I choose this difficulty? Why would I choose that struggle? Why would I not choose to be born into a super wealthy place with everything I could possibly want? Why would I choose a sickness if I could have chosen a really healthy body? It's natural to ask those questions. When we take a step back and instead of deciding what would be better, what would be worse, what do we have, what did we choose, why did we choose it, if we drop all of that, purify the inner space and decide none of it matters, just be aware just be aware of being here and now. The gratitude that we'll feel when we realize everything that's happened till now has brought us to where we are, but where we go from here is our choice. That cosmic creativity awakens. You become that creator. The fire element in the card of creativity is the element of passion, enthusiasm, excitement. It's a very, very beautiful card. The past and the present were reversed, but the future came up with this card right side up on top of the inner peace card and the wholeness card, which were reversed. 
what this tells me is that your key to both inner peace and to that feeling of wholeness is to take creative responsibility for yourself and for your reality. Instead of feeling like your circumstance determines your experience, understand that your experience will change your circumstance. One of my favorite quotes of all time is from Bashar in one of his YouTube videos when he said, your circumstances don't matter. Only your state of being matters. And I'm feeling like this is, this sums up your whole reading right now, pile three. Your circumstance, as in your bank balance, the way people see you, how your body looks, how your face looks, what kind of a place you're living in, what kind of friends you have around you, that does not matter. Only your state of being, how you feel about yourself matters. Matter doesn't mean nobody gives a shit. Matter means materialize. What is going to create your reality from here on? Not the circumstances, not all the things going on, but your state of being creates the reality you'll experience. Whenever we hear a rags to riches story of somebody who was born into an impoverished family or into a bunch of challenges, and yet they've persisted and overcome and created a life beyond most of our wildest dreams, that is the one thread running through all of their narratives. Their circumstances did not determine their reality, their state of being did. They decided to be more than the sum of their life's parts. This is what the cosmos is telling you right now. Your circumstance will not matter your future. Your state of being will matter your future. Purification means the work for you to do right now is to look in and see what you want to shift, what you want to change. Do you want to cleanse away a fear of the darkness the way I did? Or do you want to cleanse away self-doubt? Do you want to cleanse away laziness? Do you want to cleanse away self-criticism? Do you regularly have a voice in your head saying, oh, you idiot, you should have done that differently. Cleanse that away because you're not an idiot. Instead, change that voice to an inner support system saying, oh, yep, oops, you tried. Now try it differently. We can do better. Come on, we can do better. Start hyping yourself up instead of putting yourself down. Whatever it is that you're doing that you want to be doing differently, the more awareness you put into your actions and your doings of the day, it's going to become apparent what needs to be shifted and purified. And then the lack of balance you felt in the past, and I'm feeling like that was sort of a physical thing, like you stand up too suddenly and you feel dizzy or you're walking and you have to shift your weight to your one foot because your other foot feels like you're going to be topsy turvy that lack of balance will come into a grounding and a balance you'll feel that inner peace you'll feel the wholeness you'll feel like you no longer need anybody else to complete you because you are your twin crystal you are your your perfect whole and complete self unto yourself you'll be creating your reality and i think by choosing that master key talisman You've declared to yourself that you are ready to do whatever work needs to be done in order to make your life what it's meant to be. I'm going to move straight into the illustrated crystallary in your reading. I feel like you already know which practical aspects of life these messages relate to. You've already awakened a lot of your intuition pile three, I have a feeling that you're on an accelerated path of spirituality. A lot of this will already sound repetitive. You'll, you'll be thinking, well, I've been making an effort to be more aware and conscious of myself. Good. Like this is just a confirmation for you. I'm asking for one card from the illustrated crystallary for pile three. What meditative focus can help unlock all of this 
highest potential. Yeah, the card of Ruby with the message called you only more so. That means what you're looking for, what you're becoming, what you want most to be is you. You're already that. Only more intensely, more passionately, more obviously. In some ancient traditions, the spider is not seen as a creepy, crawly, negative, fearful thing. She is seen as the master weaver who spins the web of reality. And when you're manifesting your highest potential, you are becoming that in your life. You're not trapped in a web spun by the world. You're spinning the web in which you want most to reside. The web doesn't have to be a bad thing like a matrix that you're caught in or a trap or something that makes you stuck. It can be like your hammock that you fall into at the end of the night when you're ready to rest. It can be your happy place. This card is showing the world you're creating for yourself is of your own choosing and you're not here to change yourself. When you pick this master key, the goal is to be the most refined version of you, the highest possible version of you, the most you you can be. And so the meditation for you in order to unlock all of this ultimate potential, it's not only to purify away whatever is not meant to be there anymore, it's also to pat yourself on the back and congratulate yourself for all the things that you love about yourself and be that only more so. And putting that focus, putting that consciousness into your actions, into your decisions, into your movements throughout the day, that will bring you into your creative capacity. That will make you the creator of your reality. I hope you enjoyed this reading. This is your energetic blueprint for this month. This is December 3rd, 2021 when I'm reading this. The next reading I do will be the New Year's 2022 reading. But even if it's 2030 when you're watching this video, this is your message for this month in time. And I'm excited for you to awaken that creative capacity and to build your reality being the greatest version of you you can be. Thank you so much for watching. So much love to you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.